fact, rockets are just too damn expensive and dangerous. Here at Subject Zero Laboratories, we focus our attention on technologies that are safer, not necessarily cheaper, but can get you from A to space in record time. Allow me to introduce to you the Railgun Assisted Orbital Launcher, the best and safest way to get to space. For those of you that don't know what a railgun is, it is a simple concept with great range of applications. They work with an ingenious principle called the Lorentz Force Law. Basically, you need two conductive rods connected to a power source. When an armature or projectile is placed in between the conductive rods, the circuit is closed, allowing for current to pass through. When that happens, a magnetic field is created on the rails and armature. The magnetic field on the armature repels against the same magnetic field of the rails, creating a force that is perpendicular to both the flow of the current and the magnetic field, accelerating the armature to unbelievable speeds. Technically, any speed can be achieved with this technology. Unfortunately, you are the bottleneck. Sending humans into space is quite difficult, since they must come back alive. Talk about regulations. Hello everyone, Subject Zero here. To get into low Earth orbit, we need to reach 7800 meters per second on a tangential trajectory on a tangential trajectory relative to Earth, varying in altitude from 200 to 2000 kilometers. Accelerating to that speed requires a long track. And I mean, a long track. Only one place would be crazy enough to allow such thing. Florida, Cape Canaveral. The coast to coast distance is about 224 kilometers. So to make this work, we need a track to be at maximum this distance or shorter. Remember when I said humans were the bottleneck? This is why. The human body can take large accelerations as long as the exposure isn't long lasting. The average slob can survive 20 Gs or less for 10 seconds, 10 Gs for 1 minute or 6 G for 10 minutes. Role model humans, like Air Force pilots and astronauts, can do a little better. 38 G for half a second, 9 Gs for 2 minutes and 7.5 G for 5 minutes. These accelerations aren't pleasant, but as we will see later in the video, they are necessary. However, let's start with something more enjoyable. If we calculate the distance traveled with tolerable accelerations, these are the results. For 1G, you need 3000 kilometers of track. That is a straight line distance from Hermosillo, Mexico to Cape Canaveral. But there is a problem. There is an ocean right in between. So 1G is out of the picture. 2G, 1500 kilometers, starting our track right around Houston, Texas. And 3G, which is the maximum acceleration experienced at launch by NASA astronauts, 1000 kilometers, starting at New Orleans. Considering this, low acceleration, though pleasant for slobs, building a track that long is just too expensive. We need a cheaper approach. Increase acceleration. As we already know, good for nothing humans can tolerate 6 Gs for up to 10 minutes. Doing this would reduce track length down to 500 kilometers. The cool thing is, though acceleration is high, the time it takes to go from 0 to 7800 meters per second drops significantly for every g of acceleration. In this case, it would only take 2 minutes. But to make a track with length under 224 kilometers, we are talking about 14 g's of acceleration amounting to 217 kilometers. Remember, astronauts can only sustain that for half a second. It takes 56 seconds to fully accelerate. Unfortunately, by the end of the track, everybody inside the ship would be dead. Sounds like the end of the road. Not for Subject Zero Laboratories, it isn't. So far, we know that astronauts can survive high accelerations, up to 9 Gs, and increasing acceleration reduces track length and exposure significantly. 14 G would give us the optimal track length, but everybody will be dead in less than 5 seconds. Regulations make it clear that everybody must be alive by the end of the trip. To make this work, we could do one of two things. Either move the track upward towards the border of the state, where a track of 340 or even 500 kilometers can be built, 
therefore allowing for up to 9 g's of acceleration, or we can strap our subjects to a small rocket. The first approach, though plausible, comes with a caveat. Achieving something of this magnitude has an astronomical cost attached to it. That is why we need your investment. Patreon link in the description. Currently, one kilometer of track costs in between 20 to 30 million dollars. 340 kilometers will cost about 10.2 billion dollars. This is equivalent to about 157 Falcon 9 launches, or believe it or not, almost the same cost as the Starlink project. Launching spaceships would require more expensive materials and higher precision, which most likely will increase the total and final cost reasonably. Considering cost and all other problems, I think we can all agree that the shorter the track, the better. The second option is to use a rocket. Cutting speed short at 9 Gs, track length drops to only 90 kilometers. Acceleration is only 44 seconds long and reaching 100 km of altitude would only take an extra 90 seconds at 3 Gs. Total trip time is a fraction of what it takes a space shuttle, or 134 seconds versus 520 plus, consuming only a fraction of fuel. The cost of all of this is only 2.7 billion, now equivalent to 41 Falcon 9 launches almost as many launches happening this very year. And if you are hesitant about the price tag and track length, consider this. Shorter trip, more launching capabilities, less fuel per launch, more fuel to maneuver in space, more cargo, cheaper means of energy that can be completely carbon neutral, such as solar panels, among other means of electricity, and accident free, since it's way easier to cut electricity in the case of an emergency than shutting off rockets. Now, the best part. If we take humans out of the picture, launching objects to space could be as cheap as $600 per kilogram when compared to Falcon 9 rockets at $2,200 per kilogram. Machines can withstand higher Gs of acceleration, like 50 or even 100 for instance. Track length would fall in between 60 and 30 kilometers respectively for a final speed of 7,800 meters per second and 130 to 26 kilometers for 5100 meters per second. Unfortunately, moving away from rockets is a hard sell on Earth. After all, most countries already invested heavily in infrastructure to use them. However, at Subject Zero Laboratories, we like to take things to the next level. Two places, Moon and Mars. Think about it. Rockets need fuel for launch. Hydrogen, methane, kerosene, oxygen, and whatever else you primitives can burn. Chemicals that are easy to acquire here, but not there. Even if we somehow get them out there, most of these chemicals have more important uses, like oxygens to breathe, for instance. Regulations, I know. Raul eliminates the need for these chemicals up to 80%. There are no restrictions for track length, and Moon and Mars have lower gravity, which means that we won't need exorbitant accelerations to get back into space. Example, the Moon's orbital velocity is 1000 meters per second. At 3 Gs of acceleration, we would only need a track of 17 kilometers. 6 Gs, 8 kilometers. Mars, same thing. With an orbital velocity of 3640 meters per second, for 3 and 6 Gs, we would need only 221 and 110 kilometers respectively. We need to look past construction issues. The big selling point here is that this is an alternative way of launching our spaceships back to space while saving millions on fuel costs. Ready to invest? We accept all credit cards but better invest with cold hard cash and crypto. Lastly, since the system can be fully electric, solar panels can handle the job with ease. And the best part of all of this is that the minerals to construct rails, tunnels, infrastructure can all be mined on spot. Now the only question that remains is… Would you ride one of these? Subject Zero, we're done here.